Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. The summer of 1982 is truly heating up. Now that we got a taste of the Commodore 64, we're ready for anything. But first, the message from our sponsor and one of my favorite Atari commercials. You wanna play Berserk? You're <laughs> on. Hey, where are you going? The video arcade! You can't play Berserk at home. Now you can. <laughs> the best reaction ever. Yeah, take that, turkey. Or you might get that. here from Atari. And only for systems from Atari. Oh man, if only my grandma was that cool. My mother-in-law is that cool. She played Berserk right now. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the release of Berserk on the Atari VCS. For the very first time, you can play, that's right, Berserk at home. You don't have to go to the arcade. At least official Berserk. If you've tuned in and seen everything we played up to this point, there have been countless Berserk variants already. So this is the first time you can play actual Berserk, and I mean, like, from Stern. This is developed by Stern and brought home from the Atari. If you look back on the channel, though, we've already seen some Berserk games that have been really good. For example, we played uh, Maniac on the Atari uh, 800. That was a type-in game. It was a two-player co-op Berserk type game. We also played Night Stalker on the Intellivision and Escape on the Arcadia, and we also played Marauder, so check out those if you like Berserk-style games. Berserk, of course, came to us in the arcades back in November of 1980, and it took this long for it to officially come home here on the Atari. Let's take a look at Berserk, starting with the box. Oh man, ready to play some Berserk. So this is the front of the scan of the box. Look at the bottom right corner. It comes with a comic book inside, the Atari first edition action-packed comic book. Of, oh, volume two, it says, at least in the front of this box. I think that's the one they packed in. But look at the front of the box. This is some of the best Berserk artwork. Um, better than you would have seen. Well, uh, very uh, different than what you saw in the arcade. So it's two years later. They kind of revamped it. Made it look really, really nice. <laughs> yes, she is a true fan of the arcade. It's so good. Let's flip it over in the back. You have an example of the screenshot in the left side. But look at the top. Top right has the program contains versions for young children. We gotta check out that version. We've got 12 different games you can play. You're the prisoner of the alien planet that's made up of mazes. Robot gangs hunt you and you must shoot them before they hit you. Evil Otto, a grinning sinister face is invincible, pursues you. You can keep cool and not go bonkers. You'll eliminate robots. Escape Evil Otto and score big points. A one player game only. And has DC Comics credited because that's where the, uh, the, 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 uh, the comic comes from. Oh, yes. So much on the Atari, yeah. So if you were in um, uh, the, uh, Sears, if you didn't have the official Atari console, this is the Sears version of Berserk. Pretty much the same artwork, and they didn't change the name like most of the other Sears releases did. And then you flip it over the back. This is the later back of the box that was in the late 80s uh, re-release for Atari. You can see it says Atari 2600 and 7800 systems. Man, the future. And we also have the advertisement you would have seen in magazines at the time. Run from the robots and their evil leader, their, le their leader, evil Otto. I didn't know. Oh my gosh, there he is in the picture. Oh wow, it's a totally different smiley face. He's got like lightning coming from his eyes. I didn't know he was the leader. And we played um, a centipede style variant game a few episodes back where they had evil Evan. It was a game called Viper. And I wonder who's the more evil one, evil Otto or evil Evan? <laughs> Yes, 12 games in one, or 12 variations, not exactly games. And then we have different boxes or styles of boxes. There's the cartridge we're going to pop in. Still keeping up with the fantastic artwork by Atari. Love it. And then there's the later release where they emblazon the front Atari 2600 with some amazing artwork. Love it. Here's the manual for Berserk. How do you play this one? Well, if you had never played it before, some people would have played this as the first time of Berserk if you didn't play it originally in the arcades. We have because we play them all. <laughs> I love the special feature. It has versions for young children. Look at Evil Auto. Evil Auto looks insanely evil. The Astro date is 3200. They're going way in the future. You're the last survivor of a small group of Earth people who come to explore the planet Mazion. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't think too hard on this. When we played this in the arcades, there was no real story like this. They made all this up for Atari. However, we played lots of variants on other uh, computers and systems. They have made stories of versions of, uh, of the game, but ne nearly like this. Soon after you land, you discover the planet's dark, apparently un uninhabitable. But by then, it was too late to turn back because your spacecraft had been destroyed by Automazions. 
You are a prisoner here. You're trapped in a maze, and you have to uh, get away from the robots. You're never safe on the planet Mazion. Even when you destroy the mechanical heavies, Evil Otto, the mad and merciless mind behind the robot gangs, leaps out from where he's been observing the battle. You flee in panic because you know that you cannot kill Evil Otto, and that once he catches you, you'll never escape. He will pound you to a lifeless pulp, grinning like a maniac all the while. Man, he really sounds sinister and crazy. Your only hope is to get out of the electrified maze before Evil Otto catches you. If you do get out and find yourself in another maze, again the faceless robots shoot at you. Again, Evil Otto pursues you. Again, you must dodge, shoot, run, and into another maze. It's enough to drive you bonkers. So this is another title that is similar tropes than we've seen in the arcade. It just continues over and over again. There is no quest to kill Evil Otto. So those kids that were playing Berserk back in August of 1982, whenever they got the brand new cartridge, they, they couldn't finish the game. You never got Evil Otto. It really makes uh, you re really tougher as a gamer, that's for sure. Yes, that's right. I mean, it's a miracle it is not Atarian. All right, so how do you play this? It's one player only. Uh, actually, controls are pretty simple. I don't really have to go through too much. You go maze by maze like you do in the arcade games, and you have the Atari VCS joystick, so it's uh, it plays really well. Eight movements uh, that you can uh, move around and eight different ways to shoot. It shows over on the left side what the screenshots are in the game, uh, the escape routes, which allows you to go from different places, uh, what you look like, the robots, and lives left. Yeah, there you go. Use the left controller only. Yeah, it's pretty bare bones. You can sit down and play this without having to read the instructions. Press the fire to fire the button, and you have different directions you can aim. And for console controls, what does the game select switch do? Hold that down. Game numbers automatically change from the bottom of the screen. There's 12. Okay, so you have 12 different game variations. Reset. It looks like the color black and white just sets it to color in black and white. Nothing there. And the difficulty switches are not used. Yeah, pretty simple uh, controls considering we've seen very complex ones so far and we're going to see really complex ones later when we see indiana jones on the atari 2600 whenever that one comes out yes there was a lot of graphic ones so i'm going to be showing the car the comic book that was in this box if you got it in 1982 but yeah if you if you if you were into dc comics you could have seen even more by atari force besides the atari force uh sorry Berserk includes 12 variations. We have uh, bonus lives where you can uh, in, in use those. You can also have invincible evil auto, which is like it was in the arcades. You can have rebound evil auto, which means you can shoot him and then he shows up later. Zap him and he'll disappear again, make him rebound an infinite number of times. So it's like a, a temporary uh, reprieve of evil auto. Then you have non-shooting robots. And then in the different games, it shows you what you need to get uh, multiple lives. Uh, game one, two, three, and four. And then uh, you can see... The game 12 is the children's version of the game. There is no evil auto. The robots don't shoot at you. It's a very good game for beginners of young children. And over on the left side, what in the world am I seeing? It looks like, is that our arm cannon? A schematic of, of us or one of the robots? Got to know what the scores are. Here's the scoring for Berserk. You can score a maximum of 999,999 points. And someone did. I know they did somewhere. Yes, another unsolved mystery. We're going to see more of those. There's the score table and then breakdown of another screenshot. And then we have, as usual, on Atari strategy and helpful hints. Thank you so much. Look at all these helpful hints. You don't even need to call in a hotline. They're all right here. Amazing. And then the game matrix, which is on its side because it's in the manual. But you can see it's only for one player. You have uh, bonus lives every 1,000 or 2,000 points. E no evil auto. So you have different games. You can, you know, if you're tired of evil auto, you can get rid of them. That's such a cool feature. Then you have the rebounding evil auto, invincible, and then the non-shooting robots. So you can play without robots shooting at you. And then the shooting robot variants. So there's the 12 game modes. <laughs> yes, someone probably scored that much. So we do have other versions too. Uh, this, of course, was in PAL regions, and we have the uh, version by CCE, also in PAL regions. We have a voice-enhanced Berserk hack, because there is one thing missing from this game, and that is it doesn't have the voices like it does in the arcades. This was re uh, released later, I believe after the year 2000, 2002 or something like that. And then we have other hacks, because it's so popular. Mr. Roboto, Pez Zerk, Pink Floyd The Wall, and THX 1138. For all the George Lucas fans. But also included in the box was Atari Force. An entire comic. And they included the second uh, issue of it. Take a look at this. You have a whole comic book with Berserk. Amazing. Look at that. Ama it's so cool. Uh, the DC Comics had a, had a comic book. It shows you how big Atari was. There's nothing that's going to stop them now. Atari Force. Yes. <laughs> I've never read this comic. I'm not familiar with any of the characters, but look at this. Part 2, Chapter 1, Berserk, but they spelled it wrong. It's Berserk here instead of Berserk. So cool.
And this is a full on comic. You would have gotten the whole thing inside there. Oh, yeah, I'm sure Pure, Purina will later. No, oh, just wait. We haven't even got to that one yet. You keep referencing it, Victor, but we, we will fulfill your fantasy sometime and play the, the Purina Dog Chow video game. The year is 2005 AD. Oh, they're not following the same canon we read. It was uh, the year 3200, I think, in the manual. So a different story, but uh, a full comic book. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but uh, really impressive that it's there. All right, time to pop in and play some Berserk by Stern Electronics, programmed by Dan Hitchens. Published by Atari, or Sears, if you got it on the Sears one, in the beginning of August 1982. All right, so if you haven't heard of or played Berserk, I'm just going to go and hit reset, and we're going in right now. I'm controlling the orange guy on the left side of the screen. You can't touch the walls, but you want to be able to destroy all the robots and then make it to the next room. <laughs> he runs like he's got to go to the bathroom. We played uh, different Berserk variants, and lots of them have different ways that they've animated the, the main character. This is one of the first games where you were in a top-down shooting this way. If it, you weren't in a spaceship, I mean, like Asteroids, that we played in the arcades. And essentially, it's doing a zoomed-out or a larger-scale maze that got famous from uh, games like um, uh, Pac-Man and uh, Rally X and uh, Head On. Oh, there we go. We got them all. No problem. Even no evil auto. Now we go to the robots where they're shooting us. Oh, that's right. Game three. So we're doing the, the, the first one, so there is no evil auto. It's what everyone wanted to do. Whoa! Oh my gosh. So crazy. God, and they just annihilate me. <laughs> yeah, and we haven't seen the official Defender yet on the Atari 2600. All right, let's switch out the game modes now. Let's go to game mode three, and so we can see some Evil Auto in here. We've already seen Marauder on the Atari 2600, which the Marauder was originally on home computers that had two game modes. One that was like a shooter. There he is. Run. And then another game mode that was a top-down view like Berserk. It had kind of a stealth mechanic where you couldn't see the enemies around corners. Well, when it came to the Atari VCS, they just got rid of the first mode and only had this. This mode. So we've already seen a similar Berserk-style mode, and this one controls still very well. How do you move around and fire? It also does something where I don't think... Yeah, I can if I want to. You can, you can hold down the red button and then just move your controls in a different way. <laughs> Thanks, Mikey. Appreciate it. So you have, uh, you can hold down the red button. Yeah, look, you got me that time. I knew it was coming. Wanted to see if they offered that. All right, so let's switch it up again and do another game mode. I want to go all the way to game mode 12. If you were playing for the youngster, there's no evil auto. There's no robots that shoot at you. This would be the easiest, simplest game mode to play. But the, uh, the the gameplay still, let's go as far as we can, get the highest score we can. And of course, you're going to score more points depending on what game mode you got. For this one, game mode 12, it, uh, it, it, it doesn't really hit. Yeah, you're not going to get as high of a score. Yeah, very faithful for what you could play at home. And considering all the games on a home console, think of uh, Night Stalker on Intellivision. Think of Escape on the Arcadia that we've seen. Uh, th this one, I would say, is running and playing. Well, oh, I don't know. Night Stalker is different because it has a few other elements involved. But um, uh, it, 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 this is still up there with one of the very good console games you could play. I don't know if I could say uh, that this is one of the best games of so far you could play on a home console. The one thing that's different, which they, they, they didn't have the ability to put it in there, is the voices. That's one of the things that made it so, uh, so, so fun to play in the arcade. So you don't have any robots yelling at you. Chicken, fight like a robot. <laughs> oh, that's right. They do kind of look like that. <laughs> Yes, and the walls, let's see, I'm on, oh, the walls still do kill on kid mode. So you got to explain to your younger brother or sister, don't walk into the walls, which if you have Atari VCS joists, I just imagine them running around and then getting shocked to death. All right, so I'm going to go back to the manual and look at the game modes again. That rubric at the back is what I use to help me 
whenever I played played these before. So we can do rebounding evil auto. Let's do game mode with robot shooting. Let's do game mode five. It's gonna be a more, little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna switch it out game mode five and reset the console. Now we're gonna be able to fire a, at evil auto and he comes back again. And there it is. I wanna be able to shoot him. There we go. Okay, so yeah, he appears for a brief second. Oh, he doesn't really go away that long. He comes back really fast. I love luring the robots into walls. That was always one of the fun things, playing Berserk. Feeling like you're the one that paused their death. Alright, yeah, I'm seeing already some votes in the chat. Uh, of all the games you can play on a home console, all the games, whether it's a Berserk style game or not. Would you say this is one of the best games on a home console? Would you say it's a great game, excellent game? Or is it just average, considering the other ones on console? I'm in the boat that this is definitely not average. This is above average at least three and a half stars, and we can go higher than that. Yeah, I see four out there. At this point, I don't think I go in the realm of our five star range saying it's one of the best games you could play on a home console. It's, it's definitely very, very good. Uh, four stars, yeah, I see three and a half, maybe four. Here on the channel, we've played every game and being able to experience, for example, the type-in game Maniac that allowed two-player simultaneous Berserk-style play. Uh, well, of course, it was on home computers, but it, it still kind of gives you a, a different perspective of the landscape, knowing that that kind of thing is out there. Oh, yeah. The control, though, is it's spot on. Feels really good. Uh, very reminiscent of Marauder that we've already seen. <laughs> yes. He's insanely evil. Well, you know how we know he's evil? The manual shows him more evil than the game. And instead of using your imagination, just look at the manual. It's freaking scary. This is a lot more action-oriented than um, the games like Adventure or Haunted House. But it's still the top-down maze style game going screen by screen. Whoa! <laughs> yes. Whether it's Evil Auto or Evil Evil Evan. Now, just for fun, because we're here, let's go ahead and boot up the Berserk hack where we can hear some voices in the game. Are you ready? Let's play some Berserk of what it would be re-envisioned or reimagined later. Yeah, he does come out really fast. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's do it. So it looks the part, and uh, looks like they've... Yeah, they might just have added the voices and everything else appears to be the same. <laughs> okay, yep, it's it's coming in. Awesome. That's a good point. If it was two-player, i definitely bump, uh, bump it up a notch. One player, though, yeah. Uh, anytime I see something that's going to be like simultaneous multiplayer, let's run away. There it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. So much fun. All right. So of all the games you could play or all the games we've seen so far, uh, Berserk is a very well done home console game. Uh, of all the games we've played uh, at this point, I'm going to go four stars if you think of everything uh, on, a, on a console. If this was thinking of all the games we've ever played, I'd actually say this as three and a half. Uh, we're going to say computers, but no, if we think of all consoles, four stars for Berserk. Very, very well done. Yes. That's a good point. It does get repetitive. Um, we have seen more repetitive games and even more um, uh, monotonous games. But um, in, in this sense, they're still trying to give you what was in the arcade, and we still have arcade games that are having a repetition. Uh, there's still some. They're starting to branch away and give you something new. But yeah. Oh yeah, the sequel Frenzy! We'll be seeing that one uh, coming up. Alright, let's see what our next game is. We're next going to MS-DOS, or PC-DOS, or PC Booter, or anything on the IBM. This is Bugs. This is a game we don't have any artwork for, just a few screenshots. Let's pop it and play Bugs by Michael Oye at the beginning of August 1982. 
going from home console to home computer. So take a look at this, all ASCII graphics, kind of similar to what we want, want to see on the IBM or what's been programmed just for fun on the IBM. A nice touch with the high score table here on the right side. All right, so this was in lots of different flavors. If you look at the very top, it says version 4, 1982, 1983. This originally was in August of 1982, and then they had a revision of it uh, in 19, uh, later in 1982. And then they had version 4 in 1983, and then version 5 in 1984. So this is the first time that I, I found that you could play it. So let's go. We're essentially going to play some Centipede. I'm down at the very bottom as the tiniest, tiniest little mark. And you have the ability to shoot auto. I can literally push the button. Look, I'm not even touching anything. I'm just moving around, shooting automatically. And don't adjust your sound. There is no sound. It's completely soundless. Uh, we already know there's an internal uh, speaker that could have had sound. But this is just using ASCII graphics. And no sound whatsoever. We're going to add it to our list of all the Centipede games that are out there. The auto fire is kind of interesting. Oh, cool idea with the explosion, though, whenever you die. <laughs> oh, this game is also one life. Of all the Centipede games, we've never seen... Actually, I don't think I've seen any fixed shooter at all that has one life. This is the very first game that has permadeath. Once, once you die, you have to reset and go back to the beginning again. <laughs> oh, really? You have played this one. Now, in the later versions, I don't know for sure when you get to version 5 if they added sound, had the beeper speaker going. But he, this one is technically version 4 that we're playing on. And there we go. We died, and it goes right back to the beginning again. So there you go. Another Centipede variant. I'd say of all the games you could play on a home computer, there are definitely better ones that, uh, that we played. If you want a really good game of Centipede, I'm going to say of all the games we've seen so far, this is a 2.5 star. If that... Would you even call that bad because it had no sound? It actually works all right. Uh, it is keyboard only. There is no joystick controls. That's a good point. It is not playing as well. I'll say uh, we'll be in the bad range of all the uh, games you could play just because it's not using joystick. Keyboard only. Yeah, fair. I see a one and a half star, and I can I see that as well. Somewhere around the bad range. It, only compared to everything else that's out there. It'd be a fun ROM for a few minutes, though, on your IBM. All right. After that, let's see what our next game is. From one hit to another, ladies and gentlemen, this is Burger Time in the arcade. Let's take a look at Burger Time, starting with the advertisement flyer. This one originally came out as a game called Hamburger in Japan on the Deco cassette system. And then it was released again on the Deco cassette system, which used the cassette tapes, and then later as a standalone title. So here's one of the advertisements you would have seen for Burger Time. Love it. He's actually dancing on the burger patties. This one is the best as, as what's reminiscent for what's in the arcade. Oh, yes. And then you flip it over the back. You can see they even have controls of how to play. Examples with drawings of how to play. And the cartoon graphics work really well for it. Use the four-way control and drop ingredients like buns, hamburger patties, tomato slices, etc. on a plate to make hamburgers. You're out to... Uh, you're out... If you, you are out, if you touch an enemy, hot dogs, pickles, and eggs are after you. Press the red button to sprinkle pepper and stop the enemy. You can pass by a stopped enemy. Take french fries, ice cream cones, increase your supply of pepper. Yeah, and they have different techniques, too. They show the smash down. Do they show how to, they show them how to drop on top? But I, I learned later the other technique of waiting for them to co come after you. And then here's our other advertisement flyer when it got picked up by Bally Midway. We'll be saw in North America. Satisfy those cravings for video excitement with Burger Time. Oh, that's true. Yes. Uh, good point, Manly. And we flip this one over on the back. It has the tastiest new entree on the video menu. This one is another, I would consider, a classic arcade game from the golden age of arcades. We're nearing the end. It's around 1983, whenever we see the, the, the last few ones. But uh, Burger Time's up there as uh, just iconic. It's so good. It's that uh, idea of turning the screen on the side like Space Panic, but instead of digging up aliens, you're doing something totally new. It's very fresh. Very fresh, like pepper. There's our arcade cabinet for Burger Time with, uh, what's his name again? Mr. Pepper on the, uh, or uh, Chef Chef Pepper on the side. The cartoon graphics sell it, and uh, it, it reminds me of things like Pac-Man. It's not going for a serious theme, let's shoot up things or war or space. It's like, uh, it's burgers. Everyone identifies with burgers. There's the arcade PCB if you had the standalone, but if you had the Deco cassette system, there it is with the, the slot for the cassette tape. A lot cheaper for operators. There's our control panel. We got a four-way joystick with the pepper button on either side. Love it. It's so great. 
And this works really well because arcade cabinets were in restaurants. Why not have a burger joint with burger time? And there's the arcade marquee. One of the hot dogs coming after us. There it is, Peter Pepper. Thank you, Victor. You're, you're, you were ready. There's a cassette tape for the Deco cassette system. And another advertisement flyer with some burgers. <laughs> I know the sequels are not as good. It's not as easy as you think to make a sequel of a hit. All right, so let's take a look at the manual or operator's manual for Burger Time. This is the later one. Notice it says November 1982, and I had some sources say that Burger Time was released in North America in November 1982, but then I had some sources say that it was released in North America in August 1982, and then earlier in Japan as Hamburger. But uh, regardless of what it is, Hamburger didn't catch on. Burger Time definitely does. There's the two different flavors of arcade cabinets. I'm already wanting a burger now. And let's see if this game, ha this uh, manual has anything about the game itself. How do they explain what Burger Time is? One or two player game. And your only difference in the two player mode is the cocktail flips. Yeah, so it's alternate play. You're not playing as two different uh, Peter Peppers at the same time. When playing the game, you're the, chef's, you're the chef's controlling force. It is up to you to direct him through the maze of ladders and, build, and platforms to build his burgers. Your job is to give him guidance when, while building his burgers and keep him away from his pursuers. These pursuers are very sneaky and, if given half a chance, will try to corner your chef at the end of one of the platforms or to trap him on one of the ladders he has to use to get to one level of platforms to another. The chef's pursuers have no defense mechanisms of any kind, but they cannot be permanently eliminated either. As soon as your chef puts one pursuer out of commission, another appears somewhere on the screen at the edge of the platforms. However, in an emergency, your chef can slow these pursuers down for a short period of time. This is accomplished by having them throw pepper on them. When you hit the pepper button, his pursuers will be disabled for several seconds. When you're disabled like this, the chef can walk right over him and not be caught. As your skill increases, the number of direction of pursuers come at your chef. Oh man, they come so fast. When you go in the later levels, it's insane. You have to have overall accuracy and highly improve. Chef's bonus are awarded to you periodically throughout the game as you reach pa and, and pass certain pre places. But bear in mind, the map itself is pretty much the same. So we're not going to other levels or other gameplay styles. Everything is on one screen. It's like a classic uh, Golden Age arcade game. Yes, very good point in the chat. Yeah. All right, so major features is detailed self-diagnostics, power chassis, so mostly technical. Game objective is to have fun and survive as long as possible while constantly improving your skills and building as many burgers as you can. More pursuers, more difficult mazes will be harder to compete. Yeah, it just gets harder and harder. Yeah, there we go. That's all we need for how to play the game. So for different ones, this was a lot. It was originally as Hamburger in Japan on the Deco Cassette system, and then it was later released as the Deco Cassette in North America and then Data East as a standalone in Japan as well. Then it also was released as Cook Race, if that one sounds familiar, hopefully not. And then also as the Valley Midway release, which is the one we're gonna be playing. Let's pop in and play some Burger Time. Going to the arcades by Data East, published by Valley Midway in the beginning of August, 1982. Oh yes, that's right. We are gonna see that one later as well. All right, so this is all the artwork you would have seen around the CRT as the attract mode gives us the point score and uh, look over on the left side, it shows you instructions how to play and playing hints. I originally played this at someone's house that owned the uh, Burger Time arcade cabinet. And I played it over and over and over again. And I didn't understand any of the, the strategies. I just tried running away from all of the, the, the enemies. And then there in the attract mode, they start exp they explain to you how it works. Walking across while they're on the platform and uh, it is the, it, one of the best ways to take them out. <laughs> yes. You should immediately know how to play. I'm with Nolan Bushnell on that. Arcade games have gotten more and more complicated, and computer games have gotten more and more complicated. And as we go on, it's just going to get more and more after that. You can't just put games in the palm of your hand anymore. Oh, yeah, this is, this is huge. Okay, so what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit and get us more in on the action. All right, let's put a coin in and play some Burger Time. Oh, sounds so good. Let's do it again. <laughs> All right. So all you have is four different ways to move and then pepper to move around. And you're essentially building the burgers. You are the most unsanitary chef in the history of all mankind who's, who's literally walking across the platforms <laughs> or walking across the ingredients before delivering to the customers. Just disgusting. Let's see if we can get these guys there. 
and then go across here. There we go. Let's take this guy out. Yeah, it's a simple premise. It's almost like you're playing a walking game. You gotta be able to walk across the right way. And if you look in the top uh, right of the screen, it shows you how much pepper you have left. Oh, still loads of fun. And then we gotta get some ice cream. That'll do very nicely. Let's see if we can get this guy to follow us. Yep, took the bait. There they go. And every enemy you take out, they just come back all over again. Let's see, I wanna get that ice cream. And I uh, just saw in the chat, yeah, about the controls. Since it's a four-way joystick, it, it, it can sometimes feel slightly wonky because when you want to uh, move in a, in a direction that you feel is nuanced, besides the up, down, left, and right, it, it'll stall you for a sec. So it takes a little bit of time to get used to just because of that. Oh, they're following me. Let's see if I head back up here. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ports of this one, too. So this is the very first time we've ever seen Burger Time anywhere. And you can technically say we're first seeing hamburger, but uh, I'm gonna stick with burger time. There, there's sometimes we play a game first in Japan as the Japanese title, if there's differences, but to tell you the truth, all they really changed was, nope, get it. All they really changed was the the title, opening screen. Majority of the gameplay remains the same, whether it's, um, <laughs> the death animation. Gameplay remains the same. All they do is just change the title to uh, Hamburger. And you can see this screen has changed a little bit from the other ones. It switches them up a little bit. You gotta be a little smarter than the enemies. There we go. Got another one. We have no pepper. Oh! Didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, I like that little, the, the little nuance of physics is really fun. And with this artwork on the side, you can see what instructions you would have been reading before you play the game if you weren't familiar. Just wait for them to get close. Oh, he didn't take the bait. All right, well, I'm going to go get some coffee. That's how you get some more pepper, because we've run out. They didn't give us after our death. Wait for it. There he is. And then we got to get some bread to help us out. We'll go to the top up here. All right, so I already saw some ratings before we started this show. Of all the arcade games right now, we already know there's Donkey Kong out there. We already know there's Frogger out there. We already know there's Defender out there. There's Robotron 2084. There's lots of amazing arcade games. <laughs> I should have used the pepper. Yes, they are not replenished when you die. You gotta get tough to play this one. Oh, look at this. So cool. And Peter Pepper goes down there and delivers the letter. So charming. Awesome. And then can we go down? Oh, we can. Nice. It doesn't wrap around. Second place. Awesome. Oh, I'm seeing Victor going five. Of all the arcade games that you can play right now, this is one of the best arcade games, Victor. And there's our point score. Let's go in again. <laughs> All right, let's go down on this side. Yeah, I'm seeing lots of fives. I, I, I really enjoy the, the, the fresh idea because um, we played tons and tons of like uh, panic games from the side view or uh, other computer games. Look, they're not taking the bait. Those cheapskates. And this one just feels really fun to play. Yeah, four, four and a half. Let's see, we're gonna go there. I consider this arcade game a staple of an arcade. If you want to have a classic arcade game, this should be in there. If it's if this game is not here, I wouldn't consider it a true retro or classic arcade. With the likes of Galaga and Frogger and Donkey Kong and so forth, this one it, it, it needs to have that place too. Oh, he got away! I don't believe it. Okay, he went to the top. Let's see if we can get this one here. And one thing to remember is the enemies uh, are tracking your location, but once they commit to a ladder, then they go, and they follow the ladder all the way up. So if you're really good at seeing where the enemies are... I think I've wasted all my pepper. Oh, okay, I still have three left. If you get an idea of where they're gonna, where they're gonna go, then you can take... Oh, I didn't take the bait. 
but continue following that path. Let's see if I can take these guys. Oh, just one. There we go. Now we're on a roll. Let's see if we'll get this egg to follow. Nope, he went the other way. You bastard. <laughs> oh, same level as Donkey Kong. That's a big one. Yeah, of all time. Oh, <laughs> there's the wonky controls. You don't get to the top of the ladder at just the right point. It'll go to the other side. And finish it up. First round's always easy. As the uh, maps change, I think there's only three. Uh, if, 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 if Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, how many different map variations? I, I think... I've only seen three. <laughs> oh, yes, and we're going to see that one this year as well. Popeye's another really big one. Let's go up here. Let's start at the top and work our way down this time. Be smart. Use the bread. Come on, use it. That's how you do it, right there. Get him to take the bait. That's it. We'll get this guy to follow us there. That's how you do it. Once you get to the top, then we're looking pretty good. Oh, the pepper! <laughs> the pepper didn't work. How many lives do I have left? Okay, I still have a, some. Oh, six different ones. Oh, yeah, way off. Bring it down. Didn't even get nearly as high, but oh, man, what a blast. What a blast. So Burger Time is uh, fantastic. Uh, it is a fresh take on this perspective. Uh, changing something and also making it more relatable. We're not going into space. We're not shooting things uh, down. It's uh, fun, whimsical. Uh, it is. It needs to be in every arcade. Uh, Burger Time is one of the best arcade games you could play right now. And uh, I would say it's it's up there with. Uh, it, I would want to do this as uh, besides other arcade games. I don't want to play those. I want to play something like this. This is five, five stars for Burger Time. Now I need to know what we're going to do, what happens when we see Qbert. What will happen? All right, so after burger time, let's see what our next game is. From high technology, our next one isn't a game at all. It's the latest issue of Byte Magazine. This is the August issue. Let's take a look at what's happening in the world of computers and technology. August 1982, front cover is all about Logo, which is a, another computer language. This is their uh, annual language issue where they're going to de dedicate the entire journal, which is hundreds of pages long, to just one programming language. And this one is all about logo. So uh, mostly technical, not really going to go into too much detail. If you look over on the left, it's all about graphics using high re resolution sprite oriented graphics. Going to be really helpful for the Commodore 64. And then the beginner's guide to the logo, what logo is doing in schools. How it's uh, really not just for kids. It's to both, supposed to introduce uh, computers to children, but uh, for uh, designers and developers, yeah. Oh, Turtle Graphics, yes. 8-bit micro, that's right. And then uh, why you, why would you use Logo? How do you introduce Logo to children? <laughs> um, and then the glossary of cultural... Uh, cultural glossary, and then logo on the Apple II, the TI-99, and the TRS-80 color computer, each version of logo for all those different ones. And then I looked in to see if they had anything about game reviews, but they do not. So all this journal is, what we usually do with Byte uh, magazine, is we just look at the table of contents and then move on because we can't go through uh, hundreds and hundreds of pages. I mean, look at this. Uh, that's 511 pages all about logo. But that's what's another programming language that's out there and big right now. Oh yeah. All right, let's see what our next game is. We're going to the Commodore Vic 20 in the United Kingdom. This is Cavern Run. Let's take a look at Cavern Run. It has no no box, no information as far as uh, just a few screenshots. So let's pop it and play Cavern Run. Developed by the Computer Room, published by Bubble Bus Software at the beginning of August, 1982. We're gonna speed us up. Yes, it is usually very serious stuff. Byte Magazine is where we get the heads up of the technology of the future in 1982. All right, so what level do we want? Let's do F1 and go. This uses the VIC-20 joystick, and we're playing what really feels like a Caverns of Mars game. The only thing, though, is we're not shooting anything. It's Caverns of Mars with no sound and no shot. Oh, I'm about to lose fuel. I better get some or die. <laughs> you crashed 132 miles down. Okay, great. Thanks. 
and do it again. Let's do F2 level and see if that works. There we go. So it uh, it's like a uh, almost a dumbed down version of. But check check out check out how you get to get the fuel. You have to scrape by the edge. Since you're not shooting the fuel, you have to slide your spaceship all the way to the edge just in case. Oh, nice! Like uh, ten cents to rent or take a look at it. All right, so this one is working well enough for the Commodore VIC-20 joystick, but the ability to not shoot is like a hindrance of... It's like they saw Caverns of Mars and said, let's take away what makes it fun. Because the picking up the fuel is almost like you're having to work a timed a timed game. Oh, what is this? Whoa, 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 we just crashed. And they switch it up to a different area where you have to go in and out of things. Now I want to see what's next. I thought this was all it was. Let's see if I can make it down enough before I pick up the double fuel. Nice and easy. There we go. So I got enough there. I think we're good. Just make it left and right until we get to the other section. Gosh. Okay, here we go. And now I got to make it down. Oh, <laughs> that's so difficult. Yeah, so it is a brutally difficult game. Oh my goodness. All right, so Cavern Run is taking elements from Caverns of Mars. Uh, this is a game we're going to see later on the Commodore 64. Uh, pretty soon, actually. I think it should be coming up at some point. So the first one was on the Commodore VIC-20. No, it is no burger time. This feels stark difference. Imagine going from the arcades to this one. Yikes. Uh, so of all the games you can play on a home computer, Cavern Run is, I'm going to say, bad. Uh, of all the titles. Two stars? Yeah, I'm seeing one over there. I'll go two. Best of the bad games. It still has merits. Uh, there is no sound. That's very bizarre on the Commodore VIC-20. All right, and let's see our next game. It's time to play on the Color Computer. Let's see Color Zap and what it's all about. This one has an advertisement flyer. Yeah, there it is. Color Zap. It is in the center of the screen. Super new space game. You must dodge the incoming photon torpedoes before they can penetrate the defenses of your ship. Once you think you got the upper hand, defensive fighters may appear and attack. Only 10 dollars. And we also have the manual for Color Zap. This is by Spectral Associates on anti-photocopy manual. So how did we get it then? I don't know. For use with these fine color computers, the TRS-80, the TDP System 100, and what's that system over there? We're going to see that computer just around the corner or two. Dra the Dragon 32. Zap the onslaught of aliens as they seek to destroy you and gain entrance to the Stargate you are defending. High resolution. Haven't seen that one before. <laughs> Arcade quality game with great sound written in machine language for fast action. Yeah, that's true. Black, uh, gr green and black only high quality graphics. And then uh, this isn't a complete manual. It's the best one we could get, but it's, you can see what it features. At least what they say here. There's a lot of lying happening at Spectral Associates. Every time they sell, they always say high resolution uh, and arcade quality graphics. But I'll let you be the judge. So let's pop it and play Color Zap by James Yee, published by Spectral Associates at sometime in the beginning of August 1982. We got to boot this sucker up. Oh, yeah, I remember Blip Magazine. Yeah, I had that one, but I decided not to showcase that on the show. Yeah, low price. You can see how this runs, too. Check it out. Color Zap. What's your name? You don't have to get personal, James. Why, why do you need to know my name? At least we know this computer isn't stealing my identity or information. All right, so my name's Chrono. That's all I'm going to give you. Enter your skill level. Uh, we'll start with two. And I've got to remember to get my joystick ready. All right, we're in. All right. With the name alone, you should have guessed what it is. It's yet another Space Zap variant. It looks the part, and yeah, it plays the part. Twitch gameplay, very, very quick. We first saw Space Zap in 1980. So another one that's two years old. Around the same time in the arcades, we saw Berserk. And it's funny that they're both coming out, or this, this variant was. We've also seen Space Zapper already on the Coco, and this is another one. This one's better. It's got a TIE Fighter that comes at us. That's awesome. Yeah, I could say this one's better than Space Zapper for the Coco. 
And they weren't kidding. These are high resolution graphics similar to like what ones we'd see on the Apple II. And utilizing as much color as possible on the color computer. The most recent Space Zap variant we've seen was in Cosmic Arc on the Atari VCS. Done very, very well. Oh, here he comes. Nope. Come here. Come here, buddy. There we go. Enemy zapped. Oh, that's right. I'm overheating my laser. I gotta remember to do it easy. Nice and easy. Easy. There we go. The overheating part. I forgot about that. Yeah, you can see on the right side, it's going down really fast. So the concept is not new, but this is actually a very well done arcade port on the home computer. So if you were a, a, space, zap, a space Zap fan, then Color Zap would be right up your alley. So what do you think of all the games you can play on a home computer? Is this pretty much average? Three stars? Is this above average, exceptional, or one of the best games you could play? Or is this just bad? Is this already bad at the time? Oh, that was right on him. There you go, enemy zapped. Yeah, that bar's going down so fast. I'm overheating this sucker so much. <laughs> but yeah, so well done, very well done, especially if you love Space Zap. Of all the games you could play on the color computer, I consider this one better than Space Zapper that we've already seen. There's been other Space Zap variants on other home computers as well, but I'm uh, thinking right down the middle, uh, three stars, perfectly average for the time. Yeah, okay for a three. Oh, that's true. The price is another good point. Yeah, we'll say three stars for Color Zap. Check it out. All right, let's see what our next game is. We're back on the Commodore VIC-20. This is Damsel. Let's take a look at Damsel. Starting with the... Oh, we have no box. Just a few uh, screenshots. So let's pop in and play Damsel. Uh, by Comdata Computer House. Published by Mr. Micro at the beginning of August 1982. This is another one I'm going to speed up so we can get right into the action. Now, this one allows you to have four players to play. I'm going to pick all four. We'll go with all four people. Let's go. What they're drawing right now is a board. This is a board game, a totally fictional made-up board game. Damsel is essentially you're going all the way around the grid. Every single one of those colors is like squares on a board game and make it to the center where there's a damsel to rescue, and whoever gets to the damsel first wins. So we begin at the top left screen, there's four players, one player's playing as O, one's playing as X, one's playing as plus, one's playing as the up arrow, or essentially, we're all playing as Petsky characters. Now it's O turn to roll the dice, I roll, I get a six, so I move six spaces, so the O moves six spaces and lands on green and nothing happens, so now it's X's turn, roll the dice. They get a uh, magic bridge. Do we want to? And then they're asking X, do you want to cross the magic bridge? I'll say yes. And there's an ogre ahead on, on the bridge. Do we want to fight the ogre? And we say yes. And we're doing this all on the keyboard. So no joystick. You're just answering the question. So this is like, I'd, I'd say one of the first examples of a board game slash adventure game. I mean, uh, adventure game is kind of a stretch though, because you, all you're doing is answering the question. Do you want to fight the ogre? Yes. Do we want to use a shield? Yes. And you beat him. And you can see how far X moved ahead. Look at that. X is way over there. So now X is turned, but they landed on white, so they have to go back. And they uh, gained a shield spell because they landed on purple. So now X's turn's done, and now the plus their turn is. So if you had a, a four different people to play, if you're into fantasy or into board games, it's kind of a cool idea. So now it's the plus is turned. They, got a, <laughs> they rolled one. They landed on the first space and they have to an orc. Do we want to fight? Yes. Do we want to use shield? Yes. And they beat him. So it's almost like we're rolling the die to play a board game. And every time we want to do something, we have to roll the die. They are using an eight sided die in this game for all the randomness. Okay. So now the last person, the arrows turns to go. They're going to roll the die. They got a two landed on white and nothing happened. So and then it goes back to the, the O's turn, roll the die. Uh, go ahead and roll the die because they landed on blue. So O gets to roll again. And I landed on blue again after rolling five. And then now I landed on the magic bridge. Do I want to cross the magic bridge? I don't know. I'll say yes. 
Oh, there's a dragon head. Do I want to fight the dragon? How about I say no? Go back and roll the die. Okay, so I had to go back if I didn't fight the dragon. So I landed on blue and I can roll again. And I rolled an eight, I landed on blue so I can roll again. And then I landed on purple and I gained a shield spell. And now it's the next person's turn. So every one of the colors represents something that happens in the game that you land on. And every time that uh, an event happens, you are essentially rolling that eight-sided die to see how it works. <laughs> it is like that. Dungeons and Dragons Candyland. <laughs> What a crazy idea, though. We have not seen, well, we very rarely see original board games. We've seen board games that were board games turned into a video game, but uh, we very, very rarely see an original board game. And this is not only an original board game, but it's an idea that hasn't been done yet. So awesome. So cool. All right, so now it's X's turn. Rolling the die, we got an eight. We landed on, oh, an orc. Do we want to fight the orc? Let's say no. Go back and roll the die. We landed on the magic bridge. Do we want to cross? Let's say yes. Oh, there's an ogre back on the bridge. So let's fight the ogre and use the shield. And we lost. Oh no. So we get to go, we have to go back. But we went back and gained a shield spell. So if you played this with four people, you're essentially just rolling a bunch of die. It, it's all random. But how much fun would you have playing a random game? Because we have Mario Party nowadays, and that's pretty much all random too. So uh, if you're into that kind of thing, this would be a good time, especially for a party <laughs> of who gets to rescue the damsel in distress. <laughs> oh, four. Yeah, if you have friends. Okay, so I already see a four star of all the games you can play on a home computer for damsel. Anybody else for all the games so far you can play, what would you give damsel? So there's zero's turn. Roll the die, they get to the magic bridge. Yes, let's cross the bridge. There's a troll, let's fight that troll. Use the shield. Terrible wounds, uh-oh. Oh, that's true. If you if you notice what just happened, if you get far enough and you get terrible wounds like that, you end up dying and going back to the beginning. So now zero's all the way back at the very beginning of the, of the board. And that's to start from there. Yeah, you, you don't really get to choose the attack. All it is is just answering yes or no questions. B very, very simple. It's kind of like this premise should be improved upon and added complexity. It, it would make for a in very interesting game. All right, so we got an orc ahead. We're going to fight the orc. Yes, yes. Uh-oh, we lost. Go back, roll the die. All right, so X is still up. Go ahead, roll the die. We got uh, take a rest on the yellow space. Now it's the pluses turn. Rolling got a three. We got a kobold ahead. It is like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I, I rated this or genre, put the genre for this as a board game, but they're using all references from Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know if you can call this a role playing board game. Yeah, two without friends, it'd be a bad game. <laughs> it's like playing Mario Party by yourself. Show of hands. Who's who's done who's done that? Yeah, so I'm seeing three and a half out there. <laughs> yeah, what party would be joined in on this in 1982? All right, so we do want to fight the Kabold. Let's try it. You beat him! We beat the Gabold. So now it's the arrow's turn. Roll the die. You can see X is ahead, and you make your way all the way around that little spiral until you get to the end. Too cool. All right, so that is Damsel on the Commodore VIC-20. I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, usually when I find a game that doesn't have box or artwork or a lot of information online, I have lower expectations. You know, like it's Othello or, or, or something that's that that, um, that that people just breeze by. But this one's actually one to, to look out for. Something that's, that's interesting. <laughs> that's true. I don't know exactly what I'm talking about because that lies in the future. From everything we've seen so far that you can play on a home computer, I'm going to give Damsel a three and a half star rating. Because of the originality, because of uh, th th this idea, and if you had four people to play with, it would be a fun time to see what happens to everybody as they move around the board. It's the uh, the beginning of something that could be great, too. So yeah, I'm going to say above average. Three and a half stars for Damsel. Oh, and see three stars, too? Oh, yeah. All right. So sadly, that's where we got to put our video game playing on pause this evening. Welcome to August 1982. Next episode, we're going to get to play the first game on one of the biggest console launches of the year. That's it for today. And like I always say, your vision is our vision. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9pm Central, so join us and let us know if you miss any games along the way.
This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.